let's talk about the most boring time series that exists, which is what we call white noise. So it's called white noise because it contains um, all of the frequencies in the spectrum, just like white light contains all frequencies. Um, if you think of a time series as an audio signal, the one that contains all of the frequencies is called white noise. It's the same as the uh, if you had an untuned radio, that shh sound that you hear, um, that's white noise. So in terms of statistics, it's actually just uh, independent and identically distributed random values. So here's an example where we um, where we generate randomly some white noise. So I so that you can get the same results as me, I've set the seed to a specific number that just sets the random number generator up on my computer to give the same numbers as it will on your computer. And then we uh, create a tibble uh, going from time one to 50 uh, and just random normal, dis normally distributed values. Um, and I set the index to be the T variable and then I've plotted it. And that's an example of white noise. Uh, it's in no particular that there's no particular patterns, it's simply random values. Um, so white noise data is data that's uncorrelated across time uh, with zero mean and with a constant variance. Um, actually, we also need independence, but because this is Gaussian distribution, is normally distributed, we, we don't actually need the, to state the independence, but in general, if you don't have Gaussian data, you will also need to ensure you have independent values. If we take white, our white noise data that we've just created and we pipe it into the ACF function, we'll get some autocorrelations, even though there's these, there is no real correlation between consecutive values of this series. Just because of the randomness of it, we'll get some values that are positive and some values that are negative. This is where these blue lines become important because they tell you uh, how large the correlations are compared to what you would expect if you did really have white noise. Um, now, in this case, all of the spikes that we're showing up to lag 16 fall within the blue bands, which is what you would expect if you had white noise data. So you generally expect for white noise, you generally expect the sample autocorrelations to be close to zero. And those blue lines give 95% critical value. So 5% of the time, even with white noise data, you will get a spike outside those limits. Um, but 95% of the time, it should stay within the limits. So where do they come from? Well, it comes from a little bit of mathematical theory around what the distribution is for the sample autocorrelation coefficient when you do have white noise data, at least when you have a lot, because this is an asymptotic result. So if you've got enough data, the distribution of sample autocorrelation coefficient for any k is asymptotically uh, normal with mean zero and variance one on t. So that means that 95% of the time you would expect those RK values to lie within plus or minus 1.96 divided by the square root of t. That's 1.96 times the standard deviation. So if you generally don't see um, 95 percent of those values lying within the bands or you get some that are a long way outside the bands then probably the series was not white noise to start with so it's, it's very common and the default in um, the packages we're using to plot those lines so that you can sort of just check that your um, spikes all of those rk values um, look like they're coming from a white noise series okay so let's take a real set of data um, and have a look and see what it looks like. So I'm just taking a small set of this data. This is um, from the data set Oz Livestock. So it's the number of um, livestock killed in different months. And we're looking at the data on pig slaughters and um, the number of pigs slaughtered each month in the state of Victoria since 2014 to the end of the series, which is um, the end of 2018. Um, and I've divided by a thousand just to make the y-axis look a bit neater. And that's what it looks like. 
Now, if you just look at the time plot, you probably won't be able to detect anything particularly unusual there. It doesn't look like there's a trend. Um, it doesn't look like there's any seasonality. It looks pretty random. And you might think that looks like white noise, but you don't really know unless you do a proper test, such as doing an autocorrelation function plot. So if we take the data set and we do the autocorrelation function plot, we see there's actually two spikes in the first 16 that are outside the range. Um, the first one is this one, which is quite a long way outside. And this one is just outside the range. Um, now we've got 16 spikes here and there's a chance, um, a 5% chance for each one of them that it could be outside the range. So getting one out of 16, it's not very surprising. So I'd probably ignore the second one, this one here at lag two. But to get two of them, getting a little less likely to occur. And this one's a fair way outside the range. Also, it's at lag 12, which is the seasonal lag. So that suggests there might be some small amount of seasonality left in this series um, that we're not seeing when we do the time plot, but you do see it when you do the ACF plot. Um, so it's difficult to detect any pattern in the time plot, but the ACF shows significant autocorrelation for lag two and 12, which I'm suggesting indicates maybe some slight seasonality in the data. Um, what we can conclude is that the series does not appear to be a white noise series because you've got those spikes outside the range. Okay, so that's how we look at white noise data and how we um, interpret an ACF plot. And it's also what those blue lines mean, which is important uh, information when you're trying to interpret what's going on with an ACF plot. You don't want to over-interpret all the little jumps and bumps, but you want to just look for where the spikes are outside those blue lines.